internet land. It's a me, Biv Crow. And on today's episode of Man Cave Museum's Flashback Friday, it's the one and only da -da -da -da, Super Mario 64. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Biv Crow with Man Cave Museum, and welcome back to another Flashback Friday. In this series, I pretty much do a single take, uncut, raw, and unedited. Just a simple rant about some of my best memories some f from some of my favorite games growing up. See, and they're right there. I just stumbled. See how that does? All right. Anyways, um, Super Mario 64. Oh my God, what can't be said about this game? It's flipping amazing. I mean, what you know, what really stood out to me is just how easy the controls were to take up. Now, you guys got to keep in mind, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I'm almost 40. So I've been a gamer for a very long time. I grew up with the Atari, the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Master System, you name it, right? Those are all 2D systems. So, you know, I was quite adept at controlling the movement of a character or the on-screen sprites with the 2D, you know, gamer's perspective. So going into 3D, it was very awkward for me. And the first game that actually felt natural uh, control-wise was Super Mario 64. So as far as that's concerned, I mean, the controls were definitely on point and very easy to pick up and, and feel comfortable with. The camera had some issues, but then again, what game in that part of that generation didn't? I mean, it was the introduction of 3D gaming as a whole, you know, to the masses. So it was definitely something they had to experiment with. I mean, you even go to some of the titles like Resident Evil, the first few games in that series, you know, it was all pre-rendered with camera angles. Some people loved them, some people hated them. But all in all, you know, the Mario camera system was okay, and I could definitely, you know, work with it and play with it. And, you know, taking a property like Mario and transforming that from a 2D, uh, you know, gameplay perspective into a 3d environment you know it's it's something that's not as easy as you would think i mean look at some of the sonic titles since the genesis era look at a lot of the titles like castlevania when they try to take some of the castlevania titles from 2d into 3d i mean you're looking at a lot of epic fails you're looking at a lot of really atrocious transformations of titles from you know, 2D to 3D when they were fantastic and legendary and epic and well-beloved in 2D. And then in 3D, they're just garbage. I mean, even Earthworm Jim. I loved Earthworm Jim uh, growing up on, on the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. And, of course, if you haven't, try the Sega CD version. That's the best. But uh, when they went to Earthworm Jim 3D, it was like, ugh, is this really the same game, you know? So the fact that Shigeru Miyamoto and, and the whole team there at Nintendo was able to successfully transform Mario from a gameplay standpoint into a 3D game from a 2D game was, was simply astonishing in, in just itself, to say the least. Now, as far as the layout of it, I'll never forget looking at the castle the first time you, you start up the game and you uh, you have these little... The Koopas in the clouds coming up to you and they're looking at you and they're like, uh, oh, we're broadcasting live here, blah, blah, blah. Like almost like it was like a behind the scenes on the scene, you know, reporting of, of like a live news event. It was kind of cute how that laid it out. But then you go into the castle and I remember the first time I played the game, I'm like, uh, what do I do? Where do I go? And then I couldn't go in any of the rooms. And finally, I found a room that I could go in. Now, you would unlock different rooms based on how many stars you had collected. And you got stars, of course, from the levels. So I finally found one that I could enter. And I'm, I'm looking around and all I see is this big picture on the wall and I'm like, uh, okay. And then I just like maybe jumped into it and then I realized, oh my God, you can actually go into the picture. It's like a portal to the worlds. So it was so creative and unique how they did that. Like I, I, I just, I can never forget just how amazing that experience was. The first time I jumped into a painting and I'm like, oh my God. This is crazy. It's like portals. And then, you know, uh, later on I found out, you know, because I beat the level and then I look to go to another level and I'm like, oh, I can unlock something else. But then I go back and I realize, oh, you could do the same level different times and the title of it, 
you know, the title of that actual... Did that really beep in my headset? Oh, man. Windows Defender is giving me nice little notices. <laughs> like I said, all done in one take. Um, where was I? Oh, you could go back. You could go back and you could actually like play through the same levels again. But the, the different titles would give you an idea or a hint of what you would have to do. Like every time you go back to the level, it would have a different name. So like in this one, it'd be like, uh, you know, the Bomb Bomb Buddies. And then, of course, you go find the Bob Bomb Buddies or something like that. I don't remember every exact title. I don't even know if that's the title. But um, you could go and collect stars like five, six, whatever times. Sometimes three, sometimes four. It just depended, right? And every time you did like what they wanted you to do, um, you could do that. And, and you could get that star for that mission. And sometimes you could actually kind of cheat your way into getting like a different star that you would get on a different version of the level. But you can get to it in that version. There's so many different secrets and cheats and awesome things about it. I mean, there's, there's not enough that could be said about this classic title. And if you haven't played it, you really need to get out from that rock you're living under and, and get the heck out. Grab it on any of the... Uh, Console re-releases, I know that Nintendo obviously has re-released it many, many times. Grab it while you can. It's such an amazing title. And, uh, you know, it truly felt open. I mean, like, literally, if you had the stars to do it, you could go on any level, any area, any... It, it just, it was so much fun. I'll never forget my memories of playing Mario 64 for the first time. And hopefully now that this is on YouTube, you won't either. Thank you again for listening to my rant. This has been Bivcrow with Man Cave Museum. And please, if you did enjoy anything I did in the video today, please go ahead and drop a like and a subscribe. I'm still new to this YouTube thing and every bit helps. Thank you so much and have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next week with another Flashback Friday. Peace.